Also be reading from Revelation 14 and 13. And I heard a voice from heaven said unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which died in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may best rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Feel. 
you. And so we depended on your God. We trusted in your Lord. Cut to the outside. One of the most in the outside. We in the outside. One of the most in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord, we pray. In the name of my side, we lift you up, God. You come to the Lord, you come to the Lord, we lift your name up, and we're going to praise your holy name, and we're going to depend on your God, just like your word, thank God. Oh, my side, thank God. In the name of my side, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, we're going to stand on your we get the
I'm the MC, so I take I take liberty, amen, with my time, and uh, I'm not going to prolong the time because we are timely church, but we want to give proper adoration and respect to this final service. This is an unveiling ceremony that we're going to do at the end, and I'm so happy that Shepherdess Kennedy has come to help me with this. Well, certainly not. Uh, Amen. That's, yeah, that's right. You can get it to her. She drove all the way from Denver down here to honor her cousin. Amen. And uh, and, I, and we we went to great pains to get his son to be here to preach the message. And he's all the way from Lubbock, Texas, with his family and his lovely wife and his daughter and their grandchildren. Amen. So these are Ella Hastings family that, uh, that I've known his son, you know, I just met his daughter a few years ago, his grand, his uh, son's wife, and uh, I'm happy to be here, and, and I praise and worship, thank you, and uh, we're going to make time now for words of expression, but I'm trying to tell you all that are sitting in here and that are going to be watching on the streaming, that I didn't just jump up and do this by myself, amen? His oldest son is sitting here with us, and his other son, Jonah Jr., helped. And also, Sister Hastings, she made the covering for the chair. Amen. So, I uh, hopefully we're here in unity, and unity is here with us. Amen. At this time, uh, I want to make room for pray for words of expression, and uh, I want to acknowledge while I'm standing that. Uh, Elder Hastings was the godfather of my son, Jason. And I don't know if Justice is here. Is he here? He, well, he's, there's his, one, his other godson. And, uh, and I'm, gonna, I'm making room now for words of expression. And I'm going to have words of expression. I'm going I'm to MC it so that y'all won't go over time. Amen. And uh, we, we all want to say a little something. Some of us that can, but all of us can't. Amen? Amen. And so I'm asking that uh, you all be, uh, get a, give me a mic for those from the congregation that's going to have words of expression. And I don't know if Justin want to talk. You want to be number one? You want to be first? Come on. You don't want to? Say something about you. At this time, I'm, I'm going to open up for a few people to have some words of expression about Ella Hastings. And uh, that's what this portion of the service is about. So if you're here, just go over to my right, over to my left, that we know you, who you are, and we can call you to come and have some words of, of the expression concerning this man of God. And we must limit your time because we are on a time schedule. Say amen for, for uh, uh, First Lady. Uh, that's, that's Sister. That's Shelly. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. She, sister Dill and her beautiful sister, Sister Blackwell. Say amen for them. Amen. Good evening, church. Um, I will um, give an honor to Pastor um, and all that's on the rest of um, My words of expression about Elder Hastings. He was my boy. My, my God, me. And, um, just before he had, I had taken sick back in September, and I am previously on dialysis. And he came and prayed for me, and he told me, he said, Shelly, I speak life unto you. Yes. And as he began to pray, I began to feel things start moving. And the doctors had came in that day and told me, well, you will not have to go on dialysis this day, but the following day, I had to go on dialysis, and he still spoke life into me. Right. And back in 19, was it 
the 208, 28, after dad had passed, yeah, 2008, I had a stroke. And um, my face was like literally turned to the back of my neck. And um, Elder Hastings said he came up and he prayed for me again. Within 30 minutes, my face began to come back normal. And he said, the Lord said, I can't let this go. And at, me and my sister were laying and parallel on each other and crying. And then she looked up at my face and she said, Sissy, I said, what? She said, your face looks beautiful. So this face underneath the mask, this is what Elder Hastings had did I'll probably 11 years ago. Amen. He really, really played a real big part in my life. I absolutely, we had our run-ins now every once in a while. But after that, he would come back and say, you know what, sis, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. You know, we had those words. But the, what he prayed for me to live for, he's now gone to glory. But I loved him. And family, you guys just be encouraged. Be encouraged. Thank you. So, um, I am the youngest of the Blackwell family, and it was with intentionality that Elder Hastings built a trusting relationship with my sister and I when my dad passed away. And so, um, my, him being more familiar with my sister, um, he worked diligently to be able to make me feel comfortable with him, because he made a uh, promise to my father on his sickbed that he would look out for us. And so he was like, sis, I want you to know that I'm here for you. Me and dad will do anything you need. And he said, take care, I'm gonna do my best. And I was like, I appreciate the Elder Hastings. And I said, but I know you have your hands full because you have Sonia and Shelly. So I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I'm on good behavior where I won't cause you any trouble. Because all three of us put together, plus her best friend Shannon, sometimes we could just be a hot mess. And he had to call us sometimes during our work day, and tell us, calm down, y'all working with each other. But um, he had a great love for us, he had a great love for my brothers, um, he had a great caring uh, place in his heart for my mom, they worked well together. And I'm just gonna tell you about this. I was going through some uh, spring cleaning in my house, and I ran across this special ink pen. And I'm like, why do I have, like literally a handful of this specific type of ink pen? So then I start thinking, I said, Elder Hastings. He would always come up to me on Sundays. PNS, you got a pen I can use. So I pulled, I usually have three or four pens. I'm a teacher, so I pulled up a pen, a pen. And I gave it to him. And at the end, I'm gonna get a bag, sis. So he ended up giving me a pen back, but it wasn't the pen I gave him. I said, Elder Hastings. Can you give me my pen back, please? And he was like, well, sis, I thought a pen was just a pen. I said, no. So then the following Sunday, he asked for another pen. So I write in color. So I gave him a pink pen. Well, he gave that pen back. Then the following Sunday, he asked me for another pen. And I had gave him, you know, his favorite pen. And I said, okay, hey, sis, can I get my pen back? Sis, well, I'm just going to replace it. So that following Sunday, he has me a pack of pens from the Dollar Tree. I said, Elder Hastings, keep this pen, this pack of pens, because I don't do those kind of pens. Well, sis, I thought a pen's a pen. No, a pen is not just a pen. And you and I know that. Could you please stop taking my pens? So every time I traveled or went to a conference, um, I would go around to the tables, and they were, at that time, that was the training pen style. So I brought him back a handful of pens and told him, you don't have to give these back, but enjoy them. And please stop asking me for all these special pens. I realized that I didn't give him all those pens, but that's the kind of relationship we had. I'm like, I know there are other people, and I know you have pens in your office. Why are you hijacking my pens? And so me and him both had a pen obsession. And so just the, it was just the small things that we were able to, you know, take victory and have laughter over it. He'd always greet me in the forehead, and he said, sis, you, you wearing them shoes, sis. 
And I said, well, thank you, Elder Hayson. You look beautiful. Your daddy would be proud. And so I appreciate his family unknowingly sharing him with us um, to intercede as our father. And uh, again, we just love him and uh, Hastings family to Candace and everyone else. We love you. I got your back, girl. I got your back. trash cans and I'm going to a revival. I'm like, I want to go to a revival too. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I tell you, those trash cans had engine parts and I didn't know that. It's just starting, you know. But again, you know, got it done and uh, and then went on to the house and, and got dressed for the revival. But, you know, we go so far back, really. And so, I, again, I thank God for him. And so I can remember when we was in Captain D and we came out of a service and the Spirit was still on us and we had church in Captain D's and the people was just listening because you can't be quiet when you talk about God. And so we was just uh, just lifting God up in Captain D's, you know, before we got our food. But, you know, that's what kind of man of God, you know, he was. So, But I just got the family in prayers and, and God is a, a good God, awesome God. And I just thank him for saving me and, and uh, for the other folks in my life as well. And thank you for this time. Amen. <laughs> um, took me a second to even come up here. Uh, that Aces is one of the only father figures I know, you know, and it's kind of kind of hard to even come up with words to say how much important he was to me. Yeah, I've been through a whole lot of things in my life, ups and downs, crazy craziness around me and he always been positive to me. He always told me to keep the head, keep my head up, keep the faith, pray every day. Especially with um, um especially the darkest time in my life. He was he was my light, he was my rock, with my mom. Um it was both of them both stayed on me. I could just just think even in run around and progressive. Number two. <laughs> and you know, going to his office all the time, every time I did something stupid, you know, my mom, go talk to your godfather, go talk to your dad, you know, so 
but he always seen there was a light at the end of the tunnel. And so um, this is to the family, Candace, uh, Sonya, we miss you. Um, I'm just saying, I don't even know how to even end this. I just say, you know, I love you, Pops. We're going to miss you, and thank you. <laughs> yeah. 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 About the military side of Mother Hastings. Yeah. I never will forget in the Chigong building on one of these years, we were sitting downstairs in the cafeteria and people were passing by on Hastings and the anointing of the Holy Spirit was, was jumping off. And people were going like, oh, wherever. You're talking about a true man of God in the military, in his uniform. It didn't make no different where all the Haitian was. It was just a blessing to know them. So full of wisdom and knowledge and kindness and love. And you know, it's not too many people. It's not too many people in the military that you could say that God was with them and people could feel it. And I just thank God for the Haitian who was just a, a like a he was like Peter in my life. He was like a rock. He was solid. He was solid. And I thank God for putting him in, in my life and helping me to be a better person. Praise Lord, saints. Praise Lord. I remember when I came to Progressive Winter, it was in 1993. I came to Progressive and um, the pastor said, who wanted to join the church? And I decided I wanted to join the church. I prayed about it and I said, I'm going to join the church. He said, you got to go to the um, new members class. Elder Hastings was doing the new members class. And I sit in there and I listen to Elder Hastings. And I listen to a man of authority. And Elder Hastings proved to me he was a man of authority. Because when I did bad stuff, Elder Hastings got on me. And I know he wasn't playing. <laughs> but he got on me in love. That's what I liked about him. He got on me in love. He didn't get on me to belittle me. He got on me in love and told me, you don't do that. And you, you know, sis, you can do better than that because God's called you, you know, to do something great. He just say something like that to me. And the Hayson, I used to sit back and watch him to see how he did with his granddaughters, say he did with his kids, say he did with his wife. I used to sit back and watch him. And the Hayson was a man of his word. He took care of his family. He loved his family. And he took, he says, I'm that's my family. And he took care of his family. But he also used to say, we was his family too. And he took care of us. I love Elder Hastings. Elder Hastings, you know, he was a God sent. He was a man of a one of a kind. There's no one that can replace Elder Hastings. I love Elder Hastings. I know Elder Hastings is smiling right now. He would have come back here if he, if, he, if he had the chance to. Because where he's at, there's no more pain. Okay. And where he's at, he can't. He don't have to sneak no more and eat chickens. <laughs> I paid feet. Because the Hastings wasn't supposed to eat that stuff. And I would catch him and he would say, shh, Francis. So where he's at, he can eat whatever he want to eat. Because right now, he's dancing around the throne of God. He said, every day is hot and hot. I see my family over here. We was waving and saying goodbye to the Haitians and crying on this side. But on the other side, they said, come on home. Come on home, we've been waiting for you. Come on home, there's no more pain over here. Nothing but joy on this side. You got to see Jesus face to face. You got to see the one who died for him face to face. I'm going to miss the other Haitians. Children, I, I do the children and we sing and we dance 
And um, I remember when I first um, got the children, it was by Missionary Barnes. Um, there was another lady, Missionary Barnes. She said, you're gonna do the children. And I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes, you are gonna do the children. And I looked at Elder um, Hastings and I said, I gotta do the children? He said, yes, you are. And I said, okay, yes, I am. <laughs> okay. And um, since then, we, the children, he always encourages me with the children. He'll get up here, and when we get to singing, Jesus loved me, for the Bible tells me so, you see Elder Hayson standing up here, and he just tapping his feet. And then he come on, creep up here a little bit, see who's singing, and then he'll step back, and he'll still be singing the song with us, with the children. But he was a big encouragement with me, with the children. When I needed toys and stuff, he would help me with toys all the time. I started off doing the toys for the children, and Elder Hayson said, no, we have an idea. We can give the toys, someone to, you know, give the toys for the um, children at the church. And he just, he was just awesome with that. So I just appreciate Elder Hayson and Sister Hayson too, because she was always backing me up. She even gave me a little certificate for the children. I was so happy. And he signed it, and she signed it, and the pastor signed it. I was so happy. Y'all don't know about that certificate. It sits in the front, sit right on my table. I'm so happy about that. So I just like to say, uh, Elder Hayson, I know you up there, but I thank you for just encouraging me with the children, and I appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Yes. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. I need to get Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Now shout hallelujah. Come on and say glory. I can hear Elder Hastings in the pulpit saying glory. I can hear him right now in heaven saying glory. That's a true warrior. That was on the battlefield. Amen. I tell you, I'm going to miss it. When I got the news, I stood up in my kitchen and I cried like a baby. I tell you, that, hey, me and him, we worked side by side with each other during the anniversary. And when I heard the news, it, it was so unreal. Yeah. And it still is to this day. Yeah. It is so unreal. I tell you one thing that I'm going to miss about Elder Hasten, I don't know if anybody ever experienced it, but his handshake and his hug. Yeah. His handshake and his hug. When he shook your hand and hugged you, you knew he was there. It was nothing fake about it. Amen. So that's a, a true warrior that has gone on home to glory. Amen. And I can hear the Lord say that good and well thy faith is served. There you go. Job well done. He's in a land where he don't have to worry no more. See, we left back here. We got a lot of things that we got to deal with. Amen. But he's going on home to glory where the streets are paved and closed. There is no more pain and there is no more crying. He's sitting at the feet of the Father. Glory be to God up in here today. I'm going to miss it. Lord knows I'm going to miss Elder Hasten. I'm going to miss it. Glory be to God. And hopefully one day, by and by, when my time comes, I can see him in the distance. When God look at me and tell me, welcome home, son. And I can see him and, and my father and a few others sitting out in the distance. And they wave him. And they said, we over here. Glory be to God on today. Amen. That's all I got to say. Amen. District missionaries come in and then I'm going to go back to the pulpit. Amen. 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 God bless you. See, they acting up. They know I, I don't know how to act. I'm going to try to be real good because my friend is in the pulpit. And I'm glad to see her. So I'm going to try to act real right. Amen. But I just want to say, I, I want to miss Ella Hastings. I know y'all see all that him hugging and all of that. And that's all good. You know what I see Elder Hastings doing? And I wish somebody could do it. I know he and the heavy mother bar here showing somebody how to do the duck walk across the pulpit. <laughs> Woo! He would get that duck walk going on, you know. And my grandbaby here so I don't fall. But he would get that duck walk going on across the pulpit. Hallelujah. Get to hollering out. Hallelujah. 
Amen. And it's, it's been a long time. And he ain't never changed. And I'm telling you right now, he was one of a kind. He was one of a kind. When I had all three of these strokes and had the two heart surgeries and all of that, he said, sis, the devil is alive. You don't live and not die. And I'm still here. I'm still here. And I thank God. I thank God for blessing me to show me a week and a half before Ella Hastings passed, God showed me he was going to pass. He showed it to me. And I woke up that morning and I said, Lord, what does that mean? And I told one of my other friends, I told Superintendent Dimmer, he said, don't dream about me. <laughs> but God showed it to me and he showed it to me because I needed to know. I've been around El Hastings a long time. His wife has been a blessing to me. He has been a blessing to me. And forever, when, when she went to clean out his office at home, he had a picture of the Denver Bronco. And she said, I want you to have it. And I'm so grateful and so thankful. But forever, when I walk in this room, I'm going to see him doing the duck walk. I'm going to hear him praising God. And the Lord just let me know it is well. So as we continue to, to grieve for Ella Hastings, let us rejoice. Because he was a rejoicing person. He was a happy person. He waved his hand and thanked God. And he supported everybody. If you had something to do in the ministry, Ella Hastings was there to push you to the front. Him and I had that in common. We know we had our own gifts, uh, Pastor Kennedy, but we had that in common, pushing others to the front. I thank God for Ella Hastings. I thank God for his family. I thank God for my pastor and his servants giving us the chance, amen, to go through. I thank God for his wife. We've developed a friendship with him passing um, uncanny. So I thank God for all of you and just keep on praising him because that's what he would want us to do. God bless you. She, they worked together every day almost well, for several years. It's kind of hard for me because I put them every day in the kitchen. And when I heard that he had passed, it took me five days of crying because we were that close. He was like a brother to me. He wasn't a minister, he was a brother. If I had problems or something like that, he was the one I went to. I'm a missing dinner And I know when you open the kitchen back up, he's not gonna be there. He'll come in every morning, speak to me, got everything ready, yeah. Okay, he go back out in his office. And on Sunday mornings, he, he, his breakfast was always there for him and Pastor. Because I made sure they got their breakfast on Sunday mornings. I got in trouble with Diane <laughs> about getting him jelly. <laughs> but she didn't know he got more than that jelly. 
If he wanted the neck bones, if he wanted anything else, he got it from me. I couldn't tell him no, I'm sorry. It was just that kind of relationship. And I'm gonna miss him dearly. But I know we gotta go on. And it's hard. It's really hard. All right. Church, say amen. amen. My granddaughter, uh, Chantel, is going to have some words. Amen. She thinks I'm always overlooking, but I, I don't. Say amen for her. Amen. Pray the Lord, everybody. <laughs> I just want to say, there's so much I can say about Elder Hastings, but I can't. The time is, you know, not allowed me to. I will just say that I've been with Elder Hastings ever since I was a little girl. And when I first started playing the piano, he said, there's no such word as cake. You gonna play, you gonna be you gonna be a good musician. And it was just a lot of stuff that he did over the years and <laughs> Elder Hastings and I, well, there was some times we had it out. But you know, <laughs> the one thing about him, if we got better, Elder Hastings was gonna sing, no matter if I said Elder Hastings, that don't sound right. He didn't care. He was like, I'm gonna sing. And so I let him just sing, and then he would get up there, and then I'd be singing. It was one time I was singing Wind Beneath My Wings, and at the beginning, at the end, he said, My wing, just with me. I was like, What does Ella Hayes do? <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Ella Hayes supported me, though. He really did, no matter what. And y'all just don't know, I sold those dinners at work, and between him and Uncle Willie, and other Hastings bring me that food. I'd be like, Elder Hastings, you late. I'm sorry. I was like, these people got to eat. I know, you know, we, we going to do better. But I just appreciate Elder Hastings. He, I can't even. And if you didn't want to hug him, okay. if you didn't feel like shaking his hand, you, he was going to get it. Because I would see Elder Hastings coming. Sometime I wasn't in the mood. I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, Elder Hastings, I know he's trying to tell. Give me that hug. So we would do that hug. I said, OK. And then he told me, he said, you know, the older you get, the more you start to walk like your grandma. I said, I know, I know. I said, I know. That's what happens. I'm, I'm young, but my body be feeling it. So he was like, but you know, I just, I'm, I'm a Ella Hastings. I can shoot. I can't even say no more. I just know he was, he was a precious person. And if you want somebody to be with you, Ella Hastings was my grandfather's ride or die, okay? He was his ride or die. I'd be like, Papa, where you go? I gotta go to Denver. I said, well, who? Elder Hayes is going with me. So they was always together. And I know my grandfather misses him, but the good thing is, is we know that if you live this life like you should, then you're gonna be able to reap that reward in the end. And so that's where we know that Elder Hayes is in today. We don't have to wonder where he went. And that's a good thing. So many people are dying, but I said Elder Hayes was a true man of God. And we certainly miss him when I look up there and. Let me tell you, every DVD I got, Elder Hastings is on it. Every time I turn on my DVDs at home, from looking back, he's on all my DVDs. And y'all know what he's doing. He's either singing, he's either shouting, or he's either fanning, or he's either cheesing. And the final thing I want to say, my son, <laughs> let me tell you, Elder Hastings, when my son would come, Elder Hastings like to say, and what have you. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That word, and what have you. One time my son was here, we was cracking up. We was in Bible study. We counted how many times he said, what have you? And it was like 50 times. He said, Mom, hell, the Hastings be saying what have you. And now Candace does it. Candace says what have you, too. I noticed she started doing that. But we love him. We're going to miss him. I'm going to let it go. But you all, just Sister Hastings, just know that he was an awesome man of God. And we certainly are going to miss him. Church State Man. And you're all going to have to forgive me because I'm getting full. And I, I've got to move on. I, I want to be able to make it through. Please, y'all understand. So I'm going to help. Minister Steve, I want to have some words. Say, Minister Steve, y'all, don't forgive me if I don't call you. I got Minister Campbell here. I got to have her come. She's a daughter. Amen. Amen. Give it up, everybody. Man, I don't know what to say about Ella Hayson. We went through so much. It's just like when I, you know, I was a late bloomer when it come to church. And when 
when I came to church, it's like Alan Hayson and like he knew me more than my dad knew me. And I didn't even know him, but he knew me. And it's just so much I could say. It's like every time I turn around, he was there. I remember I had to have a major surgery one time. And when I rolled over and looked up, there he was sitting there. And he called my mom was there too, and he said, hey mother, here he is. He waking up now, <laughs> you know. And, and, and like I said, he just always there. We had our little ups and downs, you know, but no matter what I did, he was always encouraging me. Uh, let me know, don't worry about nothing. Let the Lord have his way with you. He never put me down. And I always remember one time I did say something really crazy. One time we was in a meeting. And I said something, uh, I don't want to go into detail, but he came back to me and went, uh, Jesse, now you really hurt my feelings. I said, well, he said, you know I love your father. <laughs> He said, I love your father, I love your family, and I love you. And I just looked at him and said, Elder, I'm so sorry. I know you do. And I know you'll never leave us. That's what it was. He said, I'll never leave you. And I thank him for it. And just as I get ready, look, you know, we work together. He worked for me. If I wanted to take all work, he was there. Elder, I need you to come in. All right. You know, he was always there for me. And, uh, I remember just before when I was in the hospital also, I hadn't known he passed yet. And I was laying up there and there was this room that I could see. It's like a waiting room. And I'm looking in this room and I said, that's like Ellen Hayson up there. I said, what are you talking to myself, you know? There's Ellen up there, I'm looking. I said, what are you doing up in the waiting room, you know? And you know, like maybe a day or so later, Pastor told me that he was gone. You know, so I said, well, I got to see him. scriptures in his head while he's talking. I said, I said, well, do you remember what she said? Yeah, but I still think about scriptures in my head, so I won't have to go off on. <laughs> so I've been trying to do that, and I've been learning to do that. But but when I got the news that he had passed, it, it got to me in my daddy was a pastor, and I said I would never get to get close to another man that was a preacher, pastor, somewhere for me because I didn't want them to leave me because I didn't want that hurt to come to me again. But for some reason, co-pastor Hastings didn't take no for an answer. He kept getting in and there. Then he got into your heart. Then after he got into your heart, then you let him in. But my family and I, along with my wife, we're going to miss him. Uh, Co-Pastor Hastings and his wife, they did a lot for us. They babysit it, set for us when we needed it, um, a break and didn't ask for a dime. Even when we tried to give them something, they didn't take it. But yeah, we're going to miss Co-Pastor Hastings from the baby's family. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Minister Sante, didn't we say amen? This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Elder Hastings. Elder Hastings. What can I say about Elder Hastings? He was the AIM chairman of the Midwestern District. Yeah, yeah. And he, 
honestly, he did that job better than I've seen anyone do it ever. And he would always call me and he would ask me, he say, he 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 would correct himself. He like he'd be like, uh, brother Snooby, I mean Scooby, I mean Asante. Come come here, I need you to do something for me. And he would always ask me to, you know, make the programs for the AIM meeting or if he needed me to do something online with the uh, social media, anything like that. He would just, you know, tell me to go ahead and, you know, just get with Deacon Ford and others, Minister Shamika Ford, and you know, he said, I want y'all to draw up some something looking real good. I want it to look real blessed and, and highly favored. And I'd be like, I got you, other Hastings, I got you. And um, this year we were supposed to have the AIM meeting and I have a voicemail on my phone from him and he called me and he said, hey preacher, I need you to do up the program for the AIM meeting. I need you to do it real well, uh, real well like how you always do it. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then he said, because the only reason why I choose you is because you do it well. You and Minister Shamika Ford. Right. And so I want you to keep doing it. I want you to keep going. And he told me, he said a while ago, he told me he had a dream that I was standing behind him and there was him, pastor, district missionary, and others that were kind of standing in front of me. And he told me that God told him in the dream to protect me because I'm of chosen generation. And I was like, well, I received that word, Elder Hastings. I'm going to stand behind you. So I do appreciate Elder Hastings to Sister Hastings. Always a pleasure to everyone in their respective uh, places, to the uh, family. We love him. We appreciate him on behalf of the uh, Smith family and others. He's just a wonderful, just a mighty man of God. And he was always there when I needed him. And he always told me. Uh, Sante, uh, uh, you, you need some glue on glasses because you, you get to shouting and your glasses be on one side of the sanctuary and you be on the other side. So he always said that, him and uh, minister, uh, our minister of music. So I do thank and appreciate him for the life and for just the legacy that he left here. And we're just going to continue to bless him. We're going to continue to lift up God's name because at the end of the day, God has the final say. Amen. 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 Church, say amen. There's so much we could say. One of our daughters is here, and uh, she can speak for herself. She traveled with us all over the country and all kinds of things. Say amen for Minister Deborah Campbell. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, help. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. 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 If you can put your hands together, put your hands together and say, Praise the Lord. I just had a thought that if my buddy was sitting right there and y'all was sitting up here acting like y'all acting. He done got up and did Michael Jackson. Hee hee. <laughs> and then he do She said the duck. I said he did the shuffle across the pulpit. And we know he loved to praise God. And so Elder Hasten was a, a big part of my life and my children's life. And, and Dad, this brought back to my memory when we did his service. And it was just me and you. I said, we the three amigos. I said, there were three. And now it is two. And I began to encourage you. And I'm encouraging you today. He's in your heart, Dad. He's always going to be with you. And I know this is hard for you. And so I was reminded that my children always called Elder Hasten their pastor and called Pastor Paw Paw. And so whenever someone would go down, they wanted to know did, when they got in trouble, I said, I'm calling y'all pastor. And they said, who, Paw Paw? I said, no, uh, Jonah Hasten. And every time the boys did something or they got in trouble, because our kids get in trouble, uh, I said, uh, he's on the way. We'd be at the courthouse, and they'd be sitting there just looking. And he'd come rocking. And like he was always singing when he was walking. But no matter when he came, the favor of God was on his life. And the judges would, they, 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 they said, well, who is that? And they, they said, that's our pastor. And God always gave us favor. And I remember uh, a time that um, I was in the hospital, and... I'm very, I, had, I was very anemic, and um, 
you know, when you have to get a cold, and I somehow they have to clean you out, right? right. And so, Elder Hasten, I was in the room, and I was just like, could they carry up, come get this over with, this surgery, whatever we're going to do. Elder Hasten, he comes bopping in the room. I was like, he is not who I wanted to see today. <laughs> and he would start bopping it. How you doing, sis? I said, what are you doing here? Well, you know, I got to pray. So him and two other ministers came in. Yeah. And when the anesthesiologist came in, he said, and who are you? So Elder Hastings shook everybody's hands in there. Then he said, I'm going to pray for all y'all because she's precious to us. And I need to make sure God's going in with her. And the doctor came in. He's out the doctor. So when they were sitting down, they said, who is that? I said, that's one of the pastors at the church. He said, man, he wasn't going to let us put you on that gurney until we prayed. <laughs> They put me on the gurney. He walked down the hall saying, sis, it's going to be all right. Ooh. And then when I, when I got to the elevator, he just touched me. And when I woke up, I said, and I was singing, and I said, Elder, I can't laugh because I can't laugh. And he kept cracking jokes, cracking jokes. But he was always there. And I'll never forget when I had my stroke, when I couldn't talk. And I was just laying there, and um, I wouldn't act right because I didn't want to stay in the hospital that night. I could talk before I went into it, and I said, I'm going home. And Sonia said, Mom, what the Sam Hill? I'm calling Daddy right now. So she calls Elder Haston. So I said, he got on the phone. I said, I'm going to be good. I'm going I'm to stay. So the next day when I couldn't talk, and he came in, and when he opened the door, I just looked at him. He didn't speak to nobody. He walked straight to me. And he whispered in my ear, he said, let everything go, sis. We need, huh? We need you. Yeah. And I looked at him. And by the time he left and then passed it, he wasn't no good. So Elder Hayson is still in the gap. But within that next day, within 24 hours, I was able to say some things. But I could recognize who he was. And so I praise God for that. And I recall, you didn't have to be a member of this church. That we had uh, some mutual friends that their son had got shot. Her son had got shot five times. His name was Mario. I got shot five times. I called Pastor. I called Elder Hastings. And by the time we looked up, they both were walking in. And Elder Hastings came. This boy had five bullets in him. Right. And the doctor said, he ain't going to make it. The doctor said, it's in God's hands. Elder Hastings, we all looked at, well, we three in the corner. We said, he going to make it. And we prayed. And every day, Elder Hastings came to that hospital and prayed with that young man's mother. Can I tell you, he's uh, done, got about four or five children, he's still on this side. But it was his thankfulness that he continued to do. And so that's the kind of man Elder Hastings was, and I truly, truly love him. And the, la the one thing I remember about him that I called him, and um, I had told him I had went to see Sonia, and she ate some over when we talked. She said, he's a good sis. But then when I got that phone call, she had crossed over. I called Elder Hastings, and I said, Elder, what you want me to do? He said, sis, she's gone. I said, elder, what you want me to do? He kept saying, baby girl is gone. I said, elder, you know, is everybody with you? And I said, you want me to come up there? He said, well, sis, I just hung up the phone. And when I got there and I just looked at him, I just grabbed his hand and I said, buddy, we can do this. And I remember pastor saying to us, he said, are y'all ready? And I'm looking at him, I say, I guess so. Because this ministry has walked with us, with everyone in every ministry every death in your family and we went in and i looked and he said our girl is gone i said but we're going to be okay with this then when we got ready to do everything i said i'm not going to do nothing i got the phone call sister hasten said you need to get here because your brother can't do nothing nobody's in shape and you need to get here godmother right now and so everything that they have done for me and with me i was glad to be a part of them and i just want to share this with you when you said he was one kind of he's a one kind of a man and this is the kind of man that i know him as my big brother and as my friend when i didn't want to go on in ministry when i said i had had enough of folk in the church and church folk and y'all know how we can be when i told him he said no sis and one time he was acting up so bad at uh, progressive that i called sister hasten and i said sister hasten could you come get me and she said what I said, Copassa and Avery Haston is acting up, and I can't stay. And I'm trying to stay saved. So could you come and get me? And Elder Hastings used to tell me on Sunday, Minister Campbell, let me see the bottom of your shoe, because I know ain't no soul on it, because I was just dancing. So he is missed, but he's in our heart. And so we're to celebrate him, and we're not to grieve like we won't see him again. Because if we live the life that he lived, then we will see him again. And you know the word that says, when that first trumpet sound, 
he, he going to get up out that ground. So ain't no grave going to hold his body down. So I'm going to share this and I'm gone. It says, Elder Hasten to me in kindness was, he was patient. No matter what you said, what you do, and I can act up, he was always patient. One time me and him had to go by, and I said, I ain't never coming back. I'll never see you again. You done got on my nerves and don't call my phone no more. And I'm not coming to work tomorrow neither. And he just looked at me. He said, woo And so that was the last I heard. And I walked out the door. When I come in the next morning, he's standing up there. I said, you know you ain't supposed to have these donuts. What you bring me donuts for? And he said, sis, I love you. Because he was that kind of man. But he could see beyond what you were feeling. And he could speak into your life. So he was our man of patience. And he, one thing I know, he was obedient to God. But he was so obedient to his pastor. And he, I don't care, he was right there. He was like his shadow. Like he stepped in him. And if you had something to say about the pastor, it was like fighting Muhammad Ali with Elder Hastings. You know, and, and he had a lot of faith. He always gave us a word of inspiration. And so I want to share this with you. The union of the body and soul. God I gave this to me real quick before I got here. Says it creates a balance between the physical and the spiritual energy. Okay, the mind it holds a memory. The mind holds our thoughts. The heart holds the love that we have for Elder Hastings. And so, as long as we've got that memory and we've got that thought in our mind, it goes down to our heart. We will always keep that love. But also remember. God has the soul. Because when he called his name, he was called up to meet him. So well, we need to strive every day to live saved. This pandemic should make you want to live saved. You know what? His body got tired. And God had need of him. And I'll never forget, I was just praying. I was, calling, I was just praying. And Pastor Josiah had passed. And I said, God, he said to me, Josiah Martin he is my son. I said, yes, Lord. He said, Jonah Haston is my son. He said, neither one of them are greater than each other. They're my sons. And I had needed thee. When Sister Haston called me, I was driving that night and I passed by. I, I looked, I had this feeling and I looked over at Sonia's grave on the fountain and I said, Sonia, you're coming to catch your daddy. And as soon as I said that, that little feeling lifted off. She called me. I said, what time did he cross over? And she told me. And then when we did the service, it was a beautiful service. We all cried and jo joined each other. I left and went to the grave side, Sister Stacy. And I sit there at Sonia's grave. And I said, Sonia, now you got daddy. So you both can rest in peace. And I don't even know how long I was there. But when I got finished crying, there was a peace that was in my heart. There was a better understanding that one day I'm going to have to cross over. So my job is to live for him the best that I know how. To serve him the best that I know how. To be holy the best that I know how. Because nothing shall separate me from the word of the Lord. Amen. amen. Church, say amen. amen. Certainly God has blessed us and I thank you all for both words that helped me to make it through where I am. Mr. Missionary wrote a beautiful paper. I hope I ain't lost it. Amen. Uh, she she wrote a beautiful paper that. But at this at this time, I'm I want to thank all of you for being here. And uh, Shepherdess Kennedy is here, and she and and I and her. Uh, uh, her husband, one of the greatest men of God I've ever known, uh, worked together for many, many years, and she's carrying on that tradition. Uh, Elder Hastings always ran the service. They had a dual service. Him and Mother Ephraim would work with Unity, and in Unity we had a date. It was set in stone. And uh, so at this time, I'm going to ask you all, uh, this is one of the greatest women of our, and I'm not trying to pull up where she don't belong. Tremendous resume. Tremendous resume. Uh, she used to, when I would be in pain, she'd come to me, so she's a nurse by profession, and she'd come to me and give me something. She, I remember one time she gave me some some of that stuff that you could smell when you put it, it's ar aromatic therapy or something like that, and I put that stuff and that I got my pain stopped. And so, but what she's even greater now because she's leading a leading a church 
And I'd like for you all, if you don't mind, rest on your feet for a minute. We've been sitting a long time. As Shepherdess Kennedy comes in her own way, say amen for her. Church, and we just come to lift them up. 
Honey, I don't know who you are, but you bless me this morning. I, I love the way you praise. I love the way you praise. I thank God for all of the elders on today that here in the sanctuary without the clergy. God bless each of you in your respective places. And to, I guess, my little cousin. Amen. The speaker for today. God bless you. What an awesome opportunity. I know we've met before, but it's good to meet you again. I We are serving a great God. A great God. I Superintendent Ephraim, on my way down this morning, I was telling those that was coming with me, men, Ella Walker, my assistants, if you just wave your hand, Ella Walker, amen, evangelist McNair, sister Sonia, God bless you, and my uh, granddaughter, sister Alexis, and her two children. Thank you all for coming. But I was telling them, Ella, Ephraim, I said, um, I just don't feel this. I said, you know what? Um, I, I'm, I'm heavy. Uh, I don't know about you. Maybe some of you all don't get heavy, but I, I'm, I was heavy this morning. And when I walked in here, the woman of God was praying. See, some of you all take speaking in tongues lightly. But when the presence of tongues is in the midst of you, and if the Holy Ghost is flowing in you, there's an enlightenment in your soul. Your flesh is not talking. Your spirit is talking. Don't try to understand what she's saying because she's not speaking to you. But she's speaking to the spirit man. God knew what I needed when I walked in here. And I received everything that God had for me. And God was speaking to me this morning. And I received that word. And I thank God for the people of God. Superintendent Ephraim, you are an awesome man. You are an awesome man of God. I've always admired you and your leadership. You've always been very special to myself, my husbands, and the members of Unity Pentecostal Temple. Very special, very special. And I say that because my cousin brother was a servant, a master servant. He was a master servant. He wasn't just anybody. But God anointed him in the area of servitude. And everybody can't serve the man of God. Everybody cannot meet the needs of the leader of the congregation. And my cousin was a master servant. And he loved his pastor. I mean, there are, you know, we grew up together, you know, I'm from Plainview, Texas, and he was from uh, Tahoka and down in the little area. We always called his town smaller than our town, but they were both small. But we grew up together. We grew up with morals and values and integrity and credibility in the church. And we knew what it meant. We knew good leaders. We knew good uh, uh, men of God. We knew the characteristics of a good man of God. And we knew what it meant to be in the church. We knew church hoppers. We knew hypocrites. We knew all of that. We knew all of those characteristics of ungodly people sitting in the church. But Ella Ephraim, Superintendent Ephraim, is a godly man. That God masterminded a godly man to serve him. And a lot of times, you know, you look at assistance to leaders they want to be up front they want to be the keynote uh on the on the the scroll they want to be their name called but my cousin wasn't like that my cousin w was deep he was profound and he was prophetic 
and he, and because of his love for his pastors and his le the leaders of this church, God blessed him tremendously. God gave him a double anointing. He was like Elisha. He had a double anointing to serve. And I remember my uncle, before I married Superintendent Kennedy, before I married Superintendent Kennedy, my uncle, Uncle Lord Haston, took him in the back of the pastor's study, along with all of the elders, of, all of the pastors of Plainview District. And he said, this, uh, this young man is wanting to marry my niece. And I want all of us to take an inventory of him. And that's the way my uncle was. My uncle was a protective person. He was very loyal to leadership. And I remember the reason why that stands out into my heart, because he told my husband, if you're going to marry her, you better treat her right. Amen. And then when Ella Haston met, when we came down here, when I, we moved to Colorado, when I moved to Colorado, Ella Haston told my husband, you married her, you better treat her right. He said, you better. See, a lot of people don't say that, but he was masterful. He said, you better treat her right. And then after he seen that everything was cool, he became greatly uh, accustomed to Superintendent Lamar Kennedy. <laughs> Amen. I think um, so often we think about the making of a project, but we never think about the fine tuning of what it took to get there. And I just wanted to say, I, I, I'm not going to be very long. I know the hour is spent. But Ella Haston's daddy imparted a great spirit in him. Yes. My uncle was the treasurer for the Northwestern uh, jurisdiction in Colorado for years, for years, in Texas. He was for years, my uncle, Uncle Uncle Lord, he was the treasure. And there were big intellectual individuals on staff, you know, elders around, able to use the computer, able to use the calculator. But my uncle used his pen and pencil. He would count the money down to a penny. And it would be precise. And he was, he was proud of that integrity along those lines. Everything that he taught uh, Ella Haston, Ella Haston brought it over into this ministry. And when I met, Ella, when I came to uh, Colorado Springs, I could see everything that Uncle Lord taught Ella Haston. And he was just a mimic of it. He was a mimic of it. But that dedication, that commitment, that loyalty to leadership was imparted into his life. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're celebrating a great man of God. We're, great, we're celebrating a master servant. If anybody want to mimic servitude, they just think about it. Elder Haston, Jonah Haston, and how he cared for the house of God, house of God and the man of God. Uh, so often I think about the fact that when I, at the time I found out Ella Haston was in the ICU, I myself was sick with the core virus. Right. And I remember talking to his wife and she said, Continue to pray for him. I said, oh, we're praying for him. We're praying for him. I said, I, I, she said, they're giving up on him. I said, that's okay. We're not going to give up on him. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed. I couldn't believe that one morning I woke up with the news that my cousin brother was going on to be with the Lord. And I, and I tell you, it was painful. And it's still painful. But the reason I'm here today is because Superintendent Ephraim 
thought it necessary to allow us to come together with a closure. Yeah. We didn't get to walk down the aisle. We didn't get to sit on the family pew. We didn't get to do the last viewing. Mm -hmm. But I thank Superintendent Ephraim today for allowing us yeah. to come to, together today as the body of Christ, as those that love him, yeah. that those that, uh, you know, we, we celebrated with him, we worshiped with him. He was important to us. Yeah. So I thank God that this man of God knew the, the pain in our heart and knew that it would be valuable if we could come and just say who he was in our life. God bless you, Superintendent. Amen. God bless you. This is a Sunday morning. Some pastors don't do that. They'll give you a Friday night and rush you out. But he gave us a Sunday morning to do it. How many of you love your pastor today? Come on, love on your pastor. Love on him. Because what he's doing today is not just a closer for him, but it's a closure for all of us. Come on and tell God, thank you today. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the privilege today just to come together and say thank you. And God bless you. God bless you, Superintendent. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Um, truly, I'm not going to take too much time. Uh, I'm truly grateful for the opportunity to uh, be a part of the Hastings family. Um, he has been a truly, uh, he's been a really big blessing to my life. I didn't have a grandfather, so that Hastings stepped in for me. Especially when I married uh, his granddaughter, Candace. Um, when when I was growing up, and Hastings used to scare me. Like he scared the daylights out of me. I would come to the house. When I was in elementary school, and I see this big figure just walk across the room. And I'm like, "Who is that?" I'm like, "That's Edward Hastings." He always scared me. He doesn't say much, but his presence spoke for him. So when I finally got the courage to marry into the family, first I had to do it right because his mama. His, mama, his daughter, Kansas' mama, Sonia, was really big on doing things right. So I had to ask her permission first. And I thought I was in the clear. I spoke to, I spoke to mama Sonia. Might have, you know, get a hand in marriage and everything. She said yes. But then she said, but you have to ask my daddy. And I'm in church. And her agent stands up behind the podium and points me out. And he lets me know, Candace is my baby. And I cherish her. I mean, of course, he had other grandchildren, of course. But Candace was his baby. And he says, you better treat her right. So I, I got that part. He says the same thing. You better, that's my baby, so you better treat her right. Don't come into her life and mess it up. So I had to make sure I was right. <laughs> So the, the, the hearing of Edward Hastings passing was really hard for me and my family, of course. So I can also say that I'm going to miss his preaching. Yeah. At first, I didn't understand it. But then once you start to really listen to what Edward Hastings is really saying, there's some truth and wisdom in everything yeah. he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank God for his preaching. I still remember his last sermon, the Lord will make a way somehow. And I love that sermon. I hope I can hear him say, yeah, yeah, one more time. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> that would set me off. Because can't nobody praise God like Edward Hastings can. Can't nobody lift up the name of God like Edward Hastings can. If no one's going to get with you, Edward Hastings will get with you. You can press assure that Edward Hastings will stand right behind you telling you, go ahead, go forth. And then you will shuffle across the pulpit. I cannot wait to the day. And I get excited. Just thinking about seeing Eric Hastings again gets me excited. But on behalf of the Sales family, Eric Hastings family, I thank you, Pastor, for this for this ceremony. And the, the Hastings family and my wife, we will deeply, we will deeply miss Eric Hastings. But 
Let's not forget, it may be sad, but our haste is supposed to praise it. You can be sad for now. Yeah. Eric Hastings was a praise him. He refused to let the day end without him getting his little dance song. How you say? He can just put him up and put him down one more time. So it's okay to cry. But don't let the praise leave your lips. Uh, leave your lips. So with Eric Hastings leaving, I send them up with a praise along with them. Thank you, Lord. For us, for us getting a chance to know Eric Hastings one more time. The time we got to spend with him, I thank you, Lord. The time we got to speak to him, I thank you, Lord. The time I got to praise with him, I thank you, Lord. The time I got to pray with him, I thank you, Lord. The time I got to use with him, I thank you, Lord. Yes, you
Somebody say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. members of New Vision. I'm so happy. I'm not going to talk about this anymore because after the message is preached, we're going to unveil the chair. But there no, will never be another Hastings like that one. Our district pastors love him. I just I'll just tell Uncle Hayson he took care of it. I didn't have to say nothing in my anniversary. He made sure he, he was the first to give. He just, it's nothing you can say about him that's not good. And in reality, I was planning, I had my plans made, Shepherdess, that I was setting the church up so that Ella Hastings could take over the pastorate of the church and my son Jesse was going to be his assistant and they were going to be doing this for me. He and I went across the country, we installed churches, we, you know, we have women pastors in the New Hope Outreach Ministries and we got pastors in Virginia and Oklahoma and Texas and California 
they are still going strong. And he was my administrative assistant and anything that I needed, he'd drive for me. I don't care how we went to Bishop. We, 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 we did everything together that was official. And I, one time I remember they wanted me to go to the Bahamas and I didn't want to go because I don't like to go to Ireland. And I said, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask y'all to take the other Hastings. So I sent him in my place, he went, took my place. But he didn't, try to, he didn't try to take my place. He filled my place for me. An opportunity came up and I was so tired of traveling and that was a trip going to Israel. And I, I went to LA and I said, oh, I just can't go. I'm just I'm wore out, I'm beat up, I'm beat down. I've been to Africa and everywhere else. I'm just tired and they want me to go. And I, but I said, I can't do it. And I can't say no to these people because of my situation. I said, would you go in my place? And he said, Pastor, I'll go. And he, he went to Israel. And, and many things you all don't know anything about that he did for me uh, and that we did together. And we loved each other dearly. And I have lost my friend physically, but I'll never lose him in my heart. I thought about it and I thought about his church, this church. And I said, we haven't had a chance to grieve. And sister, I, I went to Missionary Hastings and I said, Missionary Hastings, I want to put a covering over El Hastings' chair. But I want to ask you first before I have anybody else to do it. She said, I'll, I'll do it. And so she made this covering. Amen. And then finally, time has come now for us to unveil the chair because life goes on even though we're here. Amen. And so now this is the final service and I was thinking what can we do to make this particular service the way it should be. And I said, I'll ask, see if I can ask his son. So I called Jonah Hastings Jr., which lives in Florida. And I said, I'm thinking about calling your brother in Texas to preach. And he said, well, that'd be wonderful. Uh, and so we made the plans and Robert, Hastings here. I want I know he ain't took his mask off, but I want him to take his mask off. So y'all looking at Hastings standing in front of you. Amen. Circumstances of life create situations. And uh, but I'm telling you, if you can, you can. And so the two brothers with me in the middle and Sister Hastings, with her input, we're here today. And I want to thank all of you that have given, has given or giving. You want to give something toward this, you can do it through Gillify, and the church will take care of it. Amen? Amen. I want to appreciate uh, Elder Hastings bringing his family with him. Amen. His daughter and grandchildren, those are the only great grandkids. Am I right? The great grandchildren or grandchildren? Whatever they are, they're his. Somebody say amen. So at this time, uh, he, he was traveling all the way from Lubbock. I believe you go to your aunt's church in Lubbock. In 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 Post, Texas. He serves with Ella Hastings' brother. And uh, they are a tremendous preaching family. I remember his dad, he was a great friend of mine. Ella Hastings Sr. could preach more than five minutes than most folk could preach an hour. And he had that anointing. And Ella Hastings had that anointing. He could run, Ella Hastings would run across the floor and the whole church would go up. Cause the anointing was on his life. I remember one time that I had this tremendous pain in my chest and it put me down. 
And uh, so Mother Ephraim, they called the paramedics. They took me to the hospital. And she, of course, she called Ella Hastings. And then Ella Hastings came to the, to the hospital. And I started telling them what my insurance papers was at and everything to get everything ready so that I just knew the way I was feeling I wasn't going to make it. And Ella Hastings said, no, you ain't going nowhere. I'm going to pray for you. And he laid hands on me and prayed for my chest. And uh, pain began to subside. My breathing came back to normal. The EKG test straightened out. And uh, all of a sudden, I was able to go home. But it, it had hit me so hard, it put me down for a couple of days in bed. But my heart is fine to this day. I thought I was getting ready to leave here. So because of that, I began to make preparations for my home going. Amen. And so I asked uh, Elder Hastings. I, uh, so he and Mother Blackwell got together and paid for my grave site and all of that in advance. And uh, I thought it was going to be him doing this for me. God is in charge of this. <laughs> you, you might, if God says stay, you stay. If He say go, you gone. Amen. And so I have to, I had to learn how to say amen to the will of the Master. It gives me great pleasure to be able to introduce this young man. Can you imagine how awesome it is for me to have had Elder Hastings with me 26 years in the Air Force? He was born in the house of a preacher, raised in the house of a preacher, superintendent, mother of the church, church all of his life. His family, all of them church people. And I was on the streets. But he picked him to help me. God is an awesome God. God will take care of you in spite of you if your heart is right. Can nobody do you like Jesus? Give me great honor today to present this young man to you. And when he comes to the podium, after the choir has come, I want you all to rest on your feet when he comes. Say amen. Voices are coming at this time. Pretty much whatever song that uh, we sung, uh, Elder Hayes loved it. He just got with us anything. Yeah. So we're going to sing this. Uh, I think it's a fit in here. If not, Elijah, you might have to. But I think uh, we're going to sing. I don't want to break nothing. Praise the Lord. Jesus. We'll be saying, Minister of Music broke the mic. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're going to sing this to get out of your way. Can I say one more thing about Elder Hayes? This sister Shamika Ford and I, uh, she can relate. His favorite thing he used to say, he, we be in the band. I have to tell y'all, we called Elder Hastings, uh, what do we call him? One Eye? No, the pastor was One Eye Jack, and Elder Hastings was Ray Charles. Because neither one of them could see, and we'd be going to dinner in that band, y'all. We was praying. It'd be dark, they can't see, neither one of them could see. Elder Hastings got the cataracts fixed, and we was all right after that. But before that, he couldn't see. And we'd be in the band, and he'd be, choo choo. That was his favorite thing. So we gonna miss him driving us.
They come with the thing one of a kind. One of a kind. Amen. He grew up in Slayton. Well, post Texas first, they moved to Slayton. Amen. And uh, he uh, left there and went to the service. Amen. Unbeknownst to him, amen, when he left Slayton, he left something behind. Amen. Amen. So he got that phone call, amen, and, uh, informing him of what he left. Amen. In Slayton. Amen. And so but him and my mom ended up going different directions, and so he didn't have the opportunity to raise me. Amen. But my grandfather did. Amen. Amen. So I got a chance to, amen, to be, had those same uh, characteristics and values instilled into me, amen, by my granddad and my dad here. Amen. That always comforted his heart to know, amen, that amen, my granddad had me under his wing. Amen. So we just thank God today, amen, for, amen, the life of the late sister pastor Jonah Hastings Sr. Amen. Uh, we give honor to my siblings that couldn't make it on today. Amen. Olivia's here. Amen. God bless you. My oldest sis. Amen. God bless you. Love you, sis. Amen. amen. We thank God. It was a, amen, a, a shock to us. Amen. It was painful. Still was painful, but amen. God, amen. Don't make a mistake. Amen. Amen. He don't make a mistake. So, amen. We just said yes. Amen. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Amen. And knowing that he, amen, was in a better place, amen, that helps us to get through, amen, that pain and that suffering, amen, that we were dealing with. And so, amen, we are thankful, amen. So I'm a, a system pastor of my, the church that he grew up in, in my grandfather's church, and it's pastor by my uncle, Jimmy Hastings, amen, I'm ordained in the... Uh, Texas Northwest District, amen, of Koji, amen, and we just thank God for being here with you on today. So I need your prayers, amen, to pray for me and with me, amen, amen, amen. and God will, amen, allow us to get through, amen, this moment. This is a celebration, amen, amen, because we know when we, when we leave here, amen, it's not over, <clears throat> amen, it's just the beginning, ain't that right? Amen, so we want to talk about... <clears throat> Uh, they, they brought about uh, one of a kind, and I said, one of a kind of what, Lord? Amen. Because I don't want to make him seem like he was uh, naturally better than any other man. All right. <coughs> amen. That he, amen. One of a kind. Amen. The Lord touched my heart and said, one of a kind servant. Hey, come on. Yeah. All right. One of a kind servant. Amen. He lived to take care of his pastor and take care of New Vision Center. Amen. He lived, amen, to, amen, to do the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And he, amen, lived his life, amen, as God required him to live it. Amen. And so in that, amen, I took from that examples from that to follow after. Amen. Amen. To live my life, amen, and love the Lord, amen, and to be, amen, uh, dependable, amen, to be committed. Amen. And to be humble. Amen. And to be loving and kind. Amen. We thank God for my niece. Amen. Candace. Amen. That's, that's my heart then. Amen. We thank God for her and her husband. Amen. We just thank God for all, all things on today. Amen. Y'all just pray with me. Amen. One of a kind servant. Amen. Amen. He. Amen. And so when I thought about, amen, the characteristics that make up a one of a kind Serving, amen, the, the, the service, amen, when, it, when the time wouldn't allow me, amen, to go through all of the things, amen, that make up a servant, amen. Hallelujah, amen, because Jesus said, you know, when his disciples asked him, amen, who would be the greatest, amen, they, and he let them know, amen, that if you want to be great, amen, you have to be a servant. Amen. He that will be great, let him be the servant. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe, amen, Ella Hayson exemplified that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so we're going to concentrate on three, amen, characteristics, amen, that the Lord laid on my heart. Yeah. Amen. Dedication. Yes. Yes. Determination. Yes. And discipline. Yes. Dedication. Yes. Determination. And discipline. Hallelujah. Amen. We want you to turn with to me with me to Revelation 14 and 13. This is going to be our theme. Hallelujah. Verse that my mom, amen. We thank God for her. Amen. We give honor to her as well. Amen. We thank God for all the love that she amen did and, and done for my dad. Amen. amen. We thank God for her. Hallelujah. Revelation 14 and 13, and it reads, I heard a voice from heaven. Saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, for an example, for dedication, amen, I turn to, amen, those three Hebrew boys. Amen. And Daniel 3 and 17 said, If it be so, O God, whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Hallelujah. Amen. We know in the story, amen, uh, 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 Nebuchadnezzar made up a statue, amen, he wanted to, amen, everyone to bow down, amen, but the three Hebrew boys didn't bow down, amen, and because they didn't bow down, amen, they were, amen, threatened to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and we know that God brought them out of that situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Ella Haston. Amen. He went through some trials and tribulations through his life. Hallelujah. Amen. But he made sure, amen, that he was not going to turn away from God. All right, yeah. Because it's for God I live and it's for God I die. Come on, yeah. Hallelujah. You got to be dedicated today. Yeah. Um, you got to make up in your mind today yeah. that it's for God I live and it's for God I die. Uh -huh. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Anybody got their mind made up? Come on. Anybody dedicated to the Lord? Right. Hallelujah. Ella Hayson was dedicated to the Lord, and that's why uh, he was able to be the type of servant, amen, that would be called a one-of-a-kind servant. Yes, Lord. Dedication. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Y'all still praying with me? Yes, hallelujah. Amen. And so for my second point, hey, hallelujah, determination. Hallelujah. Amen. According to, amen, the, the dictionary, Dedication means having a firm decision and being resolved not to change it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So then my mind went to Daniel. Hallelujah. We know what happened to Daniel. Amen. He was set up. Amen. And the men were jealous of him. Yeah, amen. So they went to the king and said, well, no one shall make a decree in your name for 30 days. Amen. So when Daniel heard that the decree was signed, amen, he went into his house and his window being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God as he did a fourth time. Amen. It didn't matter, amen, if uh, amen, that decree had been, amen, signed. Uh, he was going to be determined to serve the Lord. Uh, how many determined to serve the Lord today? Yeah. Uh, Ella Hasten was determined to serve the Lord. Uh, he said, I'm going to stay with God. Uh, amen. I heard the sister say a while ago, uh, amen, when uh, amen, his eyes began to fail him. Yeah. He made a promise to his brother uh, that I'm going to come down and close out 
your anniversary. And he did it three, 23 years. Amen. But a couple of those years, amen, when his eyes began to fail him, he said, well, brother, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. Amen. And then the next thing we hear, amen, he said, I'm on my way. Amen. He may not have been able to see like he wanted to see, but he made up in his mind. And I'm not going to let my brother down. I'm not going to let God down. I know the determination that I have and the dedication that I have made for you. And I'm going to go on anyway. My eyesight may not be very good, but I'm going to go on anyway. I want to know today, anybody got that determination? Say, Lord, I'll go with you. Whatever you want me to go, Lord, I'll do. Whatever you want me to be, Lord, I'll be. Just say yes, Lord. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I go, Lord. It's going to take determination to be that one of a kind servant. Determination. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. I'm going to go all the way with you, God. Because you said you'd never leave me. You said you'd never forsake me. That you'd be with me always until the end of the world. Determination. So the king tried to save Daniel. But the man let him know that you can't change your mind, king. You got to stick with the decree. Hallelujah. Amen. So that morning he rose up, amen, ran to the pit. Daniel. Hallelujah. Did your God save you? Now you say to live forever, O king. Now God, he has delivered me. An angel sat beside me all night long. Kept the lion's mouth closed. How many here today? Whatever adversary uh, is against you. Whatever fate, uh, thing you're facing today. Are you determined? Say, I'm going to stay all the way uh, in the will of the Lord. Uh, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. But I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Brother Hastings held on through sickness, pain, heartache. Whatever it was, he said, I can't let my pastor down. I can't let new vision down. Because I love him in my heart. I got to do what God had me to do. So I can't throw in the towel. I got to stay on the battlefield. Battlefield for the Lord. How many going to stay on the battlefield for the Lord today? Are you determined to stay in the will of God today? No matter what comes, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Determination. Dedication. Determination. In our last point, we're going to look at discipline. Hallelujah. I say he left Slayton, Texas. Went into the military. And we know the military is all about discipline. You got to do things the right way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But as my cousins foresaid earlier, that he came under, amen, a godly house. Amen. So he already had that spiritual discipline of how to walk, how to talk, how to do what God would have him to do. Thank you, Jesus. So the military just refined it. Thank you, Jesus. And so, you got to have discipline today. Jesus said unto us, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me. For I am meek and lonely in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens is light. Thank you, Jesus. So the Lord said to Ella Hastings, come unto me. Let me make and mold you. 
shape you into the something that I want you to be. Because I got a work for you to do. Thank you, Jesus. And so you found out that from me. And he will perfect that servanthood under his leadership. Thank you, Jesus. Because of the discipline that God has in place in life. So you gotta have dedication. You gotta have determination. But you gotta be disciplined. Thank you, Jesus. Because we're talking about a one-of-a-kind servant. Talking about a one-of-a-kind servant. You can be a one-of-a-kind servant. I'm striving to be a one-of-a-kind servant. But I'll say I keep pressing. A toward the mark. But a high calling which is in Christ Jesus. So I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. The battlefield for my Lord. My dad, you left a legacy here. You left a legacy for us. That we can follow in the footsteps. Tell us how to be served. Tell us how to follow. You cannot be a leader and not be a follower. Thank you, Jesus. But he reflected that before our eyes today. So he left a legacy. Hallelujah. Dedication. Determination. Discipline. Then when you, hallelujah, go meet the master. Ain't that why we live this life? I want to hear him say, well done. Hasha taboche. That good and faithful say. Ha! I want to hear him say, well done. That good and faithful say. Come on in and enter into the rest. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I heard, I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. Hallelujah. This is John. Hallelujah. On the Isle of Patmos. Receiving a revelation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Letting us know that your labor is not in vain. Keep working, new vision. Keep holding up the blood stained banner, new vision. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. El Hasten left you the blueprint. Yes, Lord. Of how to be a one of a kind servant. Love your pastor. Hallelujah. Pastor, I was I was telling your son, the Lord had been speaking to me all week about transition. Thank you. Transition. He's getting everything in order. Yeah. Hallelujah. So be un unmovable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always abounding in the Lord. Oh, yes, right. He said you're ready. I heard him say you're ready. Ah. Yes, God. I heard him say you're ready. Yes, you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He doesn't make a mistake. That's right. He doesn't make a mistake. Yes, Hallelujah. All right, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from his foot. Yes, Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Yeah. Ella Hasten, go and get his reward. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hands up for us. Right, Hallelujah. I got to be dedicated to the work of the Lord. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My mind is made up. My heart is fixed. Lord, whatever you have me to do, I want to find myself doing. Because you, God, have a reward for me. Thank you, Jesus. I got to stay determined to stay in the race. Amen. Because you got an adversary. He wants to destroy you. How you want to destroy you? He want to take your faith away. You know, if you take your faith away, uh, he can stop you from serving the Lord. He wants you to look at these eyes that you see. Uh, listen with these ears that we have. Uh, fighting against one another. Uh, but our, our fight is not against flesh and blood. But uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, so stay determined, new vision. Uh, stay determined to the Lord. Uh, Lord, I'm going to stay on uh, all that you want me to be. Uh, I'm going to honor myself before you, Lord. I'm going to love all my brothers and sisters. I'm going to do 
what you have in it be. And then I'm going to have this one. To be able to receive what the Lord has for me. Sometimes it's not what you want to hear. Hallelujah. Our faith wavers at times because we ask God for things that we know hey, ain't no good for us. And he knows or we, we ask him, we ask him this because we know he's not going to give it to us. And so we don't have faith. Hallelujah. But our Sunday school lessons we may able to us know that we, whatever we ask in faith, believe it or not, doubt it. We have what we ask. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So new vision today. Hallelujah. Ella Haston loved you. He loved you. Thank you, Jesus. Every time we come to post, amen, he bragged about y'all. Amen. My church. Amen. But we have a, a rocking good time. Yes, sir. Well, I heard somebody say, oh, yeah, so we put them down and we pick them up. Amen. Amen. He loved you. Amen. And now today I know that you all loved him. Hallelujah. So we want y'all to be in prayer for us. Amen. I know my delay. Sister to hasten. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm a third generation preacher. Amen. And as Ella Ephraim said, amen. Sister Ephraim. Amen. He said earlier that he was a dynamic preacher. Amen. And my dad said, well, I'm not going to try, amen, to step in his footsteps. I got to be what God want me to be. Amen. And so when I see, follow my dad all these years, I say, well, I can't try to be like him. That's it. That's, I got to let God give me my anointing. Ha, up, oh, shit. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Lord, I said, Lord, whatever you want to do, however you want to use me, Lord, use me for your glory. Use me for your honor, God. Amen. Yes. So my soul say yes to him today because I love him so. Thank you, Jesus. So don't let him shape and mold me like he mold my dad. Be dedicated. Be determined. And have the discipline to say yes, Lord. When I don't want to say yes, Lord. Lord, it's your will. Everybody remember our Savior in the Garden of Gethsemane? How many times did he go back to the Father? Hallelujah. Say, y'all just wait here for a while. Yes, when I go off and pray a little bit. I'm talking about dedication. I'm talking about determination. I'm talking about discipline. That's when our Savior is to the fire. He went to the fire. Father, let this go past the head. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. How many got that determination today? How many dedicated today? Who do you let the Holy Spirit discipline him if you are uh, all that God wants you to have, uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, uh, I'm saying to say, uh, I go from Father, I go to the cross. Uh, yes, I will. Father, give me down the head. Uh, Father, uh, if there's any other way, uh, let this come past me. Uh, nevertheless, uh, not my will, uh, and your will be done. Jesus, uh, and he went on to that rugged cross. Uh, let them stretch you wide. Uh, raise them high. Uh, put nails in his hand. Uh, nails in his floor. Just for you and I. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, dedication, uh, determination, uh, and discipline. That's uh, what makes uh, a one of a kind servant. Uh, we want to be a one of a kind servant. Uh, hallelujah. Church. Hallelujah, God's God. Yes, God. The evangelical church has a name for that. Yes, God. Sanctification. You know? Amen. You come. He said, He said, Come to me, all you that labor. All that labor. Yes, I'll God. give you rest. Yes. I will. Yes. Take my yoke upon you. Yes. And learn them. Learn them. You see, I'm lowly and huh? Uh -huh. And you'll find rest for your soul. Rest for your soul. Anybody needs some rest today? Uh huh. Hallelujah. Yes, God. The Holy Spirit is here. He's here to, uh -huh. amen, to sanctify. Uh -huh. Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Give you dedication. Give you determination. Power, 
and to discipline you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because discipline. Discipline. Hallelujah. Of the vocabulary, holiday dictionary, amen. Discipline is training, training to act in accordance with rules, having self control and obedience. Yes, Lord. How I many let the Holy Spirit finish his work in us? Paul say, I don't count myself to obtain, to have obtained. Hallelujah. But I'm going to keep pressing. Yes, God. I'm not going to give up. Uh huh. Lord, moments shape me. Uh huh. Yeah. So I can be that one of a kind yeah. servant. Yes, Lord. Because God wants to use you. Uh huh. We talked today about how, Amen. God used El Yes, He did. God wants to use you uh -huh. today Jesus. to dedicate you Jesus. to have you determine yes, yes, yes. and to discipline you. So that you can be that one of a kind servant that Ella Haston exemplified to us through his life. Hallelujah. Jesus went all the way. Show us that I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want to go to the cross for you. But what I like about it. On the third day, brother, right, ah. Ah. Yes, God. he rose with all power in his hand. Yes, my question to you today is, ah. has he risen in your heart today? Uh -huh. Amen. Yes, God. If he has not risen in, your, risen in your heart today, I encourage you yes, God. to accept his invitation. Uh -huh. He said, come, come unto me. Yes, God. If you're laboring, if you're trying to figure it out on your own, the Lord say, come, come. to me. I want to make you that servant that, that when you hear the Father say, yes, Lord. well, uh, Pastor, you say y'all were making preparations for him to take over. Yes, God. But God had the Father say. Jesus. And I hear him say, transition. Uh -huh. I shall move. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. And the blueprint has been laid, brother. Hallelujah. And the Lord say it's time. And he said, you ready? Stand on the word of God. Be dedicated. Be determined. And be disciplined. And he'll make you that one of a kind. Yes. Grandmother saying two of our three oldest boys was gonna be preachers. Yeah. And my dad said he overheard that. He was like, 
That must be Sonny and, and Tim, because it sure ain't gonna be me. Amen. He loved the Lord, but he didn't want to go that route. Oh. Amen. And so he ran for a while. Amen. I was about 12. I heard my mom, you know, she used to do like, the girl's hair is on Saturday, and I heard her telling her friend, oh, he's going to be a preacher before he turned 12. I think I was about 10 or 11. I said, oh, oh Lord, no, not me. <laughs> Amen. Because I had a stuttering problem when I was a kid coming up. I can't even say two words behind each other. How in the world I'm going to carry God's word? Yeah, no. Amen. Well, here I am. Just as he was, here he was. Right now. Serving yeah. the Lord. Amen. Yes, God. He said, come. Yes, come unto me. Don't worry about your limitations. Okay. Don't worry about you. You might not think you have what it takes. Uh -huh. Jesus said, for us, it's not possible. Yes, Lord. But with him, all things are possible. Hallelujah. So we thank God for you on today. We love you. Amen. And hallelujah. It's okay. Is it okay if I adopt y'all? I did years ago. Amen. But I'm officially going to ask y'all. Hey, it's okay if I'll adopt y'all. Amen. Because when I come here, amen, the first time I stepped through the doors, I felt at home. I felt the love. Hallelujah. So every time I come up, amen, to Colorado Springs, I look forward. Amen. To coming to New Vision. Amen. So we're going to stay in support of you. Hallelujah. And whenever the Lord can allow us to get up here, amen. We will try to be up here. Amen. To be a blessing and to be a help. Amen. And to fellowship. I love how God fellowship. Hallelujah. Just praising the Lord. He's worthy of the praise, ain't he? He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Yes, Lord. I love to praise him. I love to magnify. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey. Because there was one day I was driving my vehicle. Uh -huh. Pastor. Amen. That vehicle went off a bridge inside. Uh -huh. Amen. And then I woke up and I come to myself. And I said, oh, Lord, please stop this car. Amen. And the car stopped. The windshield fell out. I slid out the window. Amen. And I realized God gave me a second chance. All right. Yes. Amen. All so right. I said, I'm going to change my life around. All right. Amen. Someone let the Holy Spirit, amen, make me dedicated. Yeah. Yes, God. Give me determination. Yes, God. Discipline me. Yes, God. Hallelujah. To be what God would have me to be, to be a help yes, to somebody else. Yes, God. You're not saved for yourself. Yes, Lord. You're saved for others. Uh, Ella Hasten exemplified that. He let you know he, he wasn't about him. When I talked to him on the phone before he died, Hallelujah, he still sounded restrained. Uh-huh. Even though he wasn't feeling well. Son, okay, son, I'll be all right. It'll be okay. Uh -huh. You know, trying to comfort in me. I'm trying yes, to comfort him. He comforted me. He's like, it's okay. Either way, it's okay. All right. I'm ready. He said, I'm like, Paul, I fought a good fight. Good fight. I finished my course. Yes, God. Now laid up for me. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. His reward. Uh -huh. So, new vision. We want to encourage you on today. Stay committed to the Lord. Dedication. Determination. And discipline. What a message. Certainly, we're so thankful for the way the Lord has orchestrated the service. And now we're coming to the conclusion, and I'm going to ask Sister Shamika Ford. Uh, she's going to read this district missionary wrote up uh, and eat for us to help conclude the service. I'm going to ask the uh, deacons to come and move the chair out where we can see it. Amen. Just slide it out, please, for me, you strong men. We have one preacher he can do it. And Deacon Allen, uh, come please. Some of you young men and y'all. We want you to move the chair out, out of here where it's invisible. Leave the, you set it right along there on some place. Is that missionary? Will that work? Is this too far out? You, but we want to be able to remove the shroud. And uh, um, thank you for now.
Move it back maybe about six inches. That's there you are. That you're good. He sat beside me for his entire ministry in Colorado. Forty years, I know. And these are the same chairs that we sat in together from the beginning. Yes. We done changed the way they look a couple of times. The only difference now, they have a shroud over, over this one. My day will come one of these days. Amen. But today is Ella Hastings Day. Sister Hastings made this and we thought it good. And I, I asked the missionary to put something together for us. And um, I haven't read it good enough to know, but I want y'all to know she's going to read that. And then I'm going to ask, Shepherdess is going to come and help me and this missionary and and our brother. I call him Hastings. I know his name Matthews, I think, isn't it? But he's really, he's really Hastings. You can look at Hastings to the bone. But that's all right. Amen. My other son back there, that's Jason. Stand up, Jay. That's El Hastings' other godson. And he's my son that wasn't raised in my house. We have so much in common. Take your mask off so they can see you, son. Good looking kid. All right, Amen. God bless you, Ella Bibbs. Thank you so much for be being here with us. At this time, Sister Shamika is going to read the uh, unveiling. Uh, and then we're going to unveil his chair. Uh, we have to... We got to... I have to do it. Yeah. I have to have to unite. What do I do? Everywhere I went, everything I did, we did it. It's a part of it. When my foot slipped, he wouldn't let me fall all the way. My church mother saved me. They wouldn't let me fail. Elder Hastings wouldn't let me fail. Can you imagine? A man with 26 years in the Air Force, Airman of the Year, all kind of accolades on the Inspector General's team, travel all over the world. Daddy was a big superintendent, church, famous in that part of Texas, and he come and serve me. I was raised up in St. Louis Alley. God is good. God, no. I just say thank you. He raised up in the church, and I was raised up stealing. Place where I was raised, I took my young son Ronald with me one time, and Ronald. Was, it scared him just being in the neighborhood where I was raised. You could feel the evil. It was so thick down there. And they, they call it the cuts. And here I am, a pastor. You don't know what God going to do with you. He'll get you out of the dust. Or he'll get you out of the palace. But if he call you, you can make it. Shabika's going to read that, and then we're going to unveil, do the unveiling. Amen. She's coming at this time. This is her pastor, too. I'm going to ask that the congregation please stand. Today we gather together to pay tribute to our beloved brother and respected assistant pastor, 
Elder Jonah Hastings. While the providence of God is unsearchable and his sovereignty supreme, we are reminded of the scripture in Philippians 4 and 7, which says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And we declare as Job declared in Job chapter 19, verses 25 through 26, For I know my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worm shall destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. For to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. Someone once said, the measure of life is not in its duration, but in its donation. Elder Hastings has donated much, much to this church, much to his family, and much to this community at large. Today we stand in recognition of his investments, his investments of love, steadfastness, loyalty, and friendship are priceless. His investments to the ministry as first administrative assistant to New Hope Outreach Ministries, assistant pastor to progressive number two in New Vision Church of God in Christ, the Dean of Elders, AIM Chairman for the Midwestern District Jurisdiction of Colorado and many other various positions that he has held. Over the past 40 years of service, his work in the ministry, including his service to God, has been honorable. And so on this day, August 9th, 2020, we do now for the purpose of continued ministry, unveil his seat and commend him for a job well done. Although his earthly work is done, his memory and contribution to this life will continue to live on in the hearts and mind of us all. Well, my friend, I ask, I don't know how to hold full up nothing. So I wanted sister, the women to, they know how to fold things up, make them look nice. Thank <laughs> you. 
they were able to come together and to mourn their loss and celebrate their grief in a way they had not had before. Let it be a blessing to them and let it ease burdens and comfort pain. In the name of Jesus. Now God let the God of peace rest, rule, and abide in each one of them forever and forever. And the saints of God will say, Amen. Amen. Amen.